What's up everybody? It has been a very exciting week for all your camera enthusiasts out there. Two big camera announcements from Canon and Panasonic within a couple of days. Let's talk about the pros and cons for the Canon C200 in this video. The C200 seems to be Canon's first serious attempt to play along in the sub $10,000 4K resolution cine camera market. With the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro and Sony's very successful FS5, and now the new kit on the block Panasonic's EVA1, this segment is really heating up. The C200 is bringing its internal 4K Cinema Raw light and Canon's own dual pixel autofocus to the table. Two very serious arguments for a sub $10,000 camera. Although internal RAW is making the indie filmmaker's heart raise at first, question is how practical it is to pursue a RAW workflow as a one-man band. Plus, you'll need CFast cards, which are significantly more expensive than SD cards. Another reason why you'd probably think twice if you want to embrace the RAW workflow or not. The 35M HD 8-bit 420 codec is also very weak. Some people would consider the weak HD codec a deal breaker for documentaries or TV production. When even a $2000 GH5 is recording 400 Mbit at 10 bit 422 internally. It should be mentioned though, that Canon already announced that it will deliver a firmware upgrade to close this gap, but not before 2018. Let's take a look at what 10 bit 422 actually means. The term bit is a short form of binary digit. Binary is a representation of numbers using two statuses, 0 and 1. So the 8-bit number can hold 256 different combinations of zeros and 1s. When you add two more digits, which results in 10-bit, you can store 1024 different combinations, which is much more than 8-bit. And what does 422 mean anyway? It's a representation of the YUV color space, which basically represents the brightness and color values of an image. But what exactly do the numbers mean? Let's say we're looking at a 4x2 pixel region of an image. And now we separate this region into brightness and color information. The numbers define how much information will be captured by the color sampling. In this case, all brightness pixels as well as all color pixels are being captured. 4, 4, 4. 422 means that again the brightness value is represented completely, but now every second color pixel from the first row and every second pixel from the next row is being sampled. 420 however means that again the brightness is captured completely, whereas only every second pixel from the first row and no pixel from the next row are being sampled. This is why videos can be compressed without losing too much visual information, because our eyes react to contrast much more than on color. Thus, much more information on the color channel can be sacrificed to achieve heavy compression. On a side note, now you know why it's not a good idea to use 420 footage for green screen keying because the color compression doesn't represent the full image. You've probably seen that when you try to key small details like hair with DSLR footage. So what you love about the C200 is having internal raw capabilities at the palm of your hand in this price range. And what you'll quickly hate is that surprisingly weak HD codec, again in this price range. So in conclusion, the Canon C200 looks like a great concept at first. But internal 4K RAW and the according workflow would be an overkill for a run and gun shooter. And for broadcast, HD with 35 megabits a second just won't work. So to me it looks like Canon tried to check a huge box here, with 4K RAW internal for under 10K. Unfortunately, they put it into a camera that has been concepted for run and gun shooting, which doesn't really go together. So what do you think about the Canon C200? Would you swap the 4K RAW internal for a decent HD and 4K bitrate? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to not miss any reviews and tutorials here on videocontentmarketing.com. Thank you for watching.